What is going on everybody? It's Eli here from Tree Fall Studios and today we're going to be taking another look at May's Pedestal of Trials. Uh, as you can already see there's been some updates here. Uh, this is the intro. I believe I showed it in the last devlog. It already looks better just because there's post-processing going on. There's some bloom going on with the light up crystals. You can see the shadows are making the uh, bricks look a little bit better. I also edited the models actually. <coughs> In this version of the hub world um, I cut out this hole here and I cut out this hole here and uh, when I'm done with all the lighting it's not done yet I'm gonna bake all the lighting and stuff uh, so this cave should be dark and it should look like light is pouring in from the roof and is also emanating off the crystals as well so you can see the graphics have been updated just a bit uh, since the last time I've also got the new maze uh, signs to show you what maze numbers they are. I didn't even mention this in the last episode, but uh, this is the trigger zone that shows you where to stand to enter the level. And uh, this was actually an update that wasn't in the original maze game that was specific to this spinoff. Uh, the um, particles light up green when you're in it and then they change back to blue when you're not in it. So you can tell uh, when you're supposed to be pressing where you're supposed to stand to enter each level. There will be a little uh, PlayStation button symbol on there as well to show you exactly um, which button to press. But I just wanted to briefly show you the hub world, some of the things that have changed. Not a whole lot of change in here that I can show just yet. A lot of graphics updates and uh, things that were done to the materials, upgrading the materials, things like that for some of these levels. And I'm just going to jump in and go ahead and show you some of the levels like I mentioned last week um, and show how they've been updated. I didn't show any of the levels last week. Uh, but you can look at these levels in their original form in some of the devlogs a couple years ago when this game was first being created. So as you can see, uh, this maze has gotten all the lighting in, all this stuff. It's gotten fog in here now. You can see the bricks look so much better. The, the shadows look really, really good compared to what they used to be. And uh, this is just an epic maze. Uh, I'm going to run around here just to show you. I'm pretty sure I remember how to get in. It's lagging a little bit on the computer just because of uh, the screen recording software and I'm running this in the engine um, and I've got a bunch of other programs open. So I apologize for that. It should be running on the PlayStation at 60 FPS completely fine. Um, but I don't know how it's going to actually turn out in the actual recording. It might also look fine. So I've updated these materials as well. Um, you can see now that this brick is basically, it has some reflections in it. If I run around this corner of part of this part of the maze, you can see when you look off into the side, you can see how the, um, the snow piles are reflected inside of the brick. It gives it a little bit of a smooth look for being a glassed over maze because um, this is the ice on the walls. So I'm not going to run through too much of this maze. This is the first one. You've seen the overview in the hub world. Uh, it's pretty big. So you got this part of the maze, this section, the next section, and then above you have another section. So I'm going to jump back out now into a different maze. So alright guys, this is maze number two for this game. This is one of my personal favorites. Um, as you can see already before I'm even moving, I've completely updated this material set and all of the post-processing is working. You can see that there's the glow on each of these light up bars. You can see how that coin is spinning right there and you can see the reflection of the coin on the floor and you can see the reflection in the wall. I have uh, made these surfaces. Uh, they have a new bump map which they did not have so there's some 3D aspects to it. You can also see how it carries the light um, from like up there with the orange and they also will carry the lights that are down here on the floor. They're a little bit of ref they're reflective and they carry the light a little bit better. Uh, I think overall it makes this maze look so much better. It's also more visible than it was before but it's still dark to get that same effect that I'm going for. And as you can see, there's this section is lit up, this blue section. You can see all these black lines 
all throughout the maze and as you walk into each section you light them up um, you can see here you light this one up everywhere you go they light up and they're all different colors so I'm not going to show you too much of this maze because it's not huge there's some more sections down that way and a bunch down that way and you can see back here there's some more uh, but basically I just wanted to give you an overview of what this maze looks like with updated graphics and what you can experience from this one. I love the light up maze. It's pretty cool. For this game, especially for the, the PlayStation version, um, there are trophies and I worked hard on the trophy pack for this game. Uh, there's a regular trophy that you get for completing every maze, unlocking the secret final maze and all of that, like normal, like the perplexing orb, you had level trophies. And then there's miscellaneous trophies, and in this game, there's going to be quite a bit more miscellaneous trophies, almost one miscellaneous uh, task for you to complete per stage, just because there's less levels in this game. And there, you need to do more to earn the trophies than just beating all these levels. Uh, but most of them are pretty straightforward that you might find out on your own if you don't look at the trophy pack. But uh, for instance, I just wanted to bring it up because there is a trophy for this level by lighting up every single section of the floor. And that's an example of one of the miscellaneous trophies. Uh, there's other examples of, you know, riding elevators a certain number of times, getting to secret areas that you didn't know that are not exactly part of the regular maze, that type of thing. Uh, so there's a lot of effort that's being put into the trophy pack this time. Um, I mean, I always do that, but specifically this game's trophies, as I were planning, planned it all out, it's going to be one of the most fun experiences trophy hunting, I think, for our fans so far. Uh, so let's jump into one more maze, maybe two more really quickly, just to show you what some of the updated levels look like, and then we'll just keep on moving. So the devlog is running kind of long already, so this will be the last level I show you in this episode. I'll show you the first three and then show you some updates on some more in the next couple episodes over the next week or two. Uh, but this is uh, maze number three. It is one of my favorite puzzles that I've ever created. Uh, this is very Zelda inspired, I would say, um, in a sense. You can see that we're in the metal maze and they've been updated, uh, basically changed to match the graphics of the PS4. You can see that the metal looks shiny, has reflections of the sky, has reflections of the sun, all this stuff. It reflects the other colors inside the metal. You see the green reflected down in there. Uh, but this version, unlike the original maze game, has new colored walls. There's green, red, yellow, and blue. And as you can see, there's switches on the walls. This is just one of my favorite things ever. I can get to where I'm standing in the trigger zone of this switch to show you. When you press the button, it will change the walls. So the green walls will come up, the red walls will go down. It will light up green. You'll press it again. It'll push the button in. There's a little animation and then the walls will change again. So basically, not only do you have to find your way out of this entire maze, you have to figure out how to get through here by doing these moving walls. So like when I just pressed that button, it locked that part of the maze off where we came from the beginning, and it knocked down these two walls, which opens up new areas. And you can see there's some coins here, there's more switches, there's stuff to go that way, there's coins here, there's stuff to go that way. So you gotta realize you gotta come around here and hit this switch, for example, and then boom, you can see the walls have changed around you, locked you off that way, there's more switches that way, more to go this way. Uh, so this maze is just absolutely epic. And basically what you have to do is change these walls, green and red, up and down, and find your way through to find two different switches, a green, I mean, excuse me, a blue switch and a, and a yellow switch. Those switches you only have to press once in this level and then they will knock down those color walls giving you access to more parts of the maze and you have to go back and change and find these other switches and continue going through the green, red, wall, up, down, up, down thing through the new areas as well to figure out how to get to the finish. Uh, designing this maze just as a maze itself and then designing all of the triggers, the walls that we're gonna move and how 
you would make sure you had a button and you couldn't get stuck anywhere and it would unlock everything was extremely difficult. And this is one of the mazes I'm the most excited for people checking out and trying uh, when they play this game coming up soon. Uh, just because there are much deeper puzzle solving elements in this game compared to the previous game where you mostly just had to find your way out of complicated mazes and also had to do platforming sections. This game really takes the maze concept to a new level by adding deeper layers of puzzles to get through each maze as well as levels with intense platforming sections as well. So that's going to do it for today's devlog. I hope you enjoyed this updated look. You can see some of the updated graphics, some of the things that have already been fixed. Um, you can see some of the levels that I didn't really show off in the last devlog, but as you can see, there's still quite a bit to go. Uh, I got to do all the UI. I've recoded quite a bit. I've recoded the level loading screens and some of that stuff, the pause, but I haven't finished it all just yet. So there's going to be new UI, new pause, uh, and some new stuff in the hub world with the signs and how all that stuff works. And I still haven't finished completely redoing all of the mazes and all of their graphics and stuff like that so updating materials still going to be happening baking the lighting getting the lighting just right in all of these levels to uh, balance out what looks the best and what runs the best because uh, I had it looking even a little bit better um, and I was really excited but then it was kind of struggling to run on the PlayStation so there is that balance when you know you gotta decide how good you need it to look and how good it needs to run so there's going to be some new updates coming next week. If you enjoyed anything in this video, please be sure to hit that like button. If you're new to this channel, I make videos about my games. I show you their progress just like this one, but I also make videos teaching people about game development and how to get started if you're brand new. So if any of that sounds cool, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upload. I got to give a big shout out to all of our patrons that have supported us on Patreon. Uh, I can't do what I do without you guys. And I need to give a personal shout out to Carmen Red, LV, and Overhyped Gamer. You guys seriously are the best. If you're interested in checking out the Patreon page, the links will be in the description below. Without further ado, I'll catch you guys in the next video.